Ever wondered why we, as humans, behave the way we do? Ever pondered over the roots of our emotions, decisions, and actions? The answer lies deep within our evolutionary past. This fascinating journey of discovery is what brings us to the world of evolutionary psychology, a groundbreaking book by David Buss. Buss, a renowned figure in the field, uses his expertise to unravel the intricacies of the human mind and its development over millennia. His work delves into the profound influence evolution has had in shaping our behaviors, our decisions, and the very essence of what makes us human. Through his lens, we gain a deeper understanding of ourselves, shedding light on why we think the way we do, why we feel the way we do, and why we act the way we do. As we delve into the captivating world of evolutionary psychology, prepare to see the human mind in a whole new light. The foundations of evolutionary psychology lie in the concept of adaptation. This is a powerful statement that encapsulates one of the core principles outlined by David Buss in his seminal work on evolutionary psychology. To truly grasp the essence of this science, we must first understand what adaptation means in this context. Imagine our ancient ancestors living in a world fraught with challenges. Survival was not guaranteed and every day brought new trials. To cope with these challenges, they had to adapt, leading to changes in their behaviors and cognitive processes. These changes or adaptations improved their chances of surviving and reproducing, thus passing on their adaptive traits to the next generation. This process of natural selection, where beneficial traits are favored and passed on, has shaped our species over millions of years. It's a slow, continuous process, with each generation subtly different from the last. And it's this process that underpins the fundamental principles of evolutionary psychology. Adaptation, in the realm of evolutionary psychology, isn't just about physical changes. It's about the mind as well. Our brains, the most complex organs in our bodies, have been shaped by the same evolutionary forces that molded our physical forms. The way we think, the way we make decisions, our emotions, our social behaviors, all these aspects of our psyche have been influenced by our evolutionary past. Consider, for instance, our instinctual fear of dangerous animals or our innate preference for certain types of landscapes. These are not random quirks of the human mind, but adaptations that have been honed over countless generations. They are the echoes of our past, resonating in our present behaviors and decisions. But adaptation doesn't mean we're perfectly suited to our environments. Evolution is a tinkerer, not a designer, and it works with what it has often leading to imperfect solutions. Nevertheless, these solutions have been good enough to get us where we are today as a thriving complex species. In essence, evolutionary psychology seeks to understand the human mind and behavior through the lens of evolution. It looks at how the pressures of survival and reproduction have shaped our cognitive processes and behaviors over time. These adaptations resulting from our evolutionary past continue to shape our behaviors and decisions. And that, in a nutshell, is the foundation of evolutionary psychology. Let's delve into the realm of love and attraction. What drives our mating strategies? According to David Buss's groundbreaking work in evolutionary psychology, our mating strategies are deeply rooted in our evolutionary past. We're not just randomly attracted to people. Rather, our preferences and choices are influenced by strategies that have evolved over thousands of years to maximize our chances of survival and reproduction. Buss introduces us to the intriguing concept of sexual selection. This evolutionary mechanism, first proposed by Charles Darwin, suggests that certain traits are favored not because they improve survival, but because they increase an individual's chances of attracting a mate and producing offspring. This can be seen in the extravagant plumage of peacocks or the intricate songs of birds. In humans, sexual selection has led to a range of physical and behavioral traits that are deemed attractive. Buss argues that these preferences aren't just arbitrary or societal constructs, 
but are driven by an underlying evolutionary logic. For instance, men across cultures tend to prefer women who appear youthful and healthy, which could be interpreted as signs of fertility. Women, on the other hand, often value resources and status in potential mates, which might reflect the need for support and protection during child rearing. Bus also highlights the difference in mating strategies between genders, which can be boiled down to the fundamental biological differences in reproductive investment. In essence, men can reproduce with minimal investment, while women bear the burden of pregnancy and child rearing. This discrepancy leads to different mating strategies, with men often favoring quantity, while women place more emphasis on quality. But it's crucial to remember that these are generalizations. Individual differences abound, and our mating strategies can be influenced by a host of other factors, including personal experiences and the cultural norms. Sexual selection thus plays a pivotal role in shaping our preferences and actions. As we navigate the complex landscapes of love and attraction, it's fascinating to consider how our choices might be guided by these deep-seated evolutionary forces. Scene script. Parenthood is an investment, but how has evolution shaped this investment? David Buss delves into this question by exploring the theory of parental investment. This theory, at its core, posits that parents will invest resources into their offspring to ensure their survival and consequently the continuation of their genes. But the level of investment isn't uniform across all species or even within the same species. It's influenced by factors such as the number of offspring, their need for care, and the availability of resources. For humans, parental investment is particularly high due to our long childhood phase. We spend years dependent on our parents for survival, learning, and socialization. This extensive period of dependency means that the stakes are high for parents. They need to invest time, energy, and resources into raising their children, often at a cost to their own personal and reproductive interests. But the challenges of parenthood don't stop there. Evolutionary psychology also considers the hurdles individuals face in reproduction itself. For instance, finding a suitable mate is a significant challenge. This is where concepts like mate preference and sexual selection come into play. We're drawn to certain traits in potential partners traits that signal health, fertility, and the ability to provide for offspring. This attraction is not random, but a product of evolutionary pressures. Then there's the problem of uncertainty in paternity. Mothers can be certain that they are the biological parent of their offspring, but fathers can't. This uncertainty can influence their level of investment in the child. It's a complex issue one that's been a significant evolutionary challenge for males across many species. And let's not forget the competition for resources. Parents must secure enough resources to provide for their offspring, often competing with others to do so. This competition can influence everything from social behavior to physical traits. From choosing a mate to raising offspring, evolutionary pressures shape every aspect of parenthood. Conflict and cooperation Two sides of the same coin are deeply ingrained in our evolutionary past. Let's delve into these fascinating dynamics from an evolutionary perspective. Conflict, in its many forms, is a common thread in the tapestry of life. It's not just about war and aggression, but also about competition for resources, social status and mates. According to Buss, these conflicts stem from the evolutionary pressures our ancestors faced. Survival was the name of the game, and those who could outcompete others had a better chance of passing on their genes. But it's not all about conflict. Cooperation, too, has played a significant role in our evolutionary history. Buss points out that working together as a group can often bring greater benefits than going it alone. From hunting in packs to building societies, cooperation has been key to our survival and success as a species. Through cooperation, our ancestors could overcome challenges that were insurmountable for an individual. Bus explains that our brains have evolved to navigate these complex social dynamics. We've developed a keen sense of fairness, empathy, and reciprocity, 
all of which promote cooperation and maintain social harmony. At the same time, we've also honed our skills in deception and manipulation, tools often used in the realm of conflict. BUS also emphasizes that conflict and cooperation are not mutually exclusive. They can coexist and often do. A classic example is sibling rivalry. Siblings compete with each other, reflecting conflict, yet they also often form strong bonds and defend each other fiercely, demonstrating cooperation. So you see, our social interactions are not random. They are influenced by the evolutionary pressures our ancestors faced. From competing for resources to forming alliances, our social behavior is a reflection of our evolutionary history. Understanding this can give us valuable insights into why we behave the way we do and how we can harness these instincts in a constructive way. Our everyday life is a testament to our evolutionary past. But how so, you might ask? Well, evolutionary psychology offers fascinating insights into the patterns of our behavior that are influenced by our ancestors' survival strategies. Take decision-making, for example. When confronted with choices, our brains often favor immediate gratification over long-term benefits. This is because our ancestors lived in environments where resources were scarce and unpredictable. So, grabbing that juicy fruit right now, rather than waiting for a potentially bigger harvest later, made survival sense. This is not to say that we can't make long-term decisions, but our initial impulse often leans towards instant rewards. Then, there's our social relationships. You see, we humans are social creatures, and there's an evolutionary reason behind it. In the past, having allies meant better protection from predators, more food, and a higher chance of survival. This is why we crave social acceptance and fear isolation. Our brains are wired to seek companionship and form alliances, a trait that has been passed down through generations. And let's not forget problem solving. Our ancestors faced countless threats and challenges in their daily lives, from finding food to avoiding predators. Their survival depended on their ability to quickly identify problems and devise effective solutions. This is why our brains are so adept at recognizing patterns, making connections, and coming up with innovative solutions. It's an evolutionary gift that has been honed over thousands of years. So you see, our everyday lives are filled with adaptations that have been shaped by our evolutionary past. From the way we choose between a donut and a salad, to the way we form friendships, to the way we tackle problems at work or at home, every aspect of our behavior is, in one way or another, influenced by the survival strategies of our ancestors. Every decision we make, every relationship we form, every problem we solve, echoes our evolutionary past. We live in a modern world, but carry with us the adaptations of our ancient ancestors. This powerful statement by David Buss points us towards the intriguing interplay between our evolutionary past and our current behaviors. Our ancestors, who lived in environments vastly different from ours, evolved psychological adaptations to survive and reproduce. These adaptations, ingrained in our DNA, continue to shape our behaviors today, even though our environments have drastically changed. For instance, consider our penchant for sweet and fatty foods. Our ancestors, living in times of scarcity, benefited from consuming these high-energy foods. Today, in an era of plenty, this predilection can lead to health issues like obesity and diabetes. Similarly, let's look at social behaviors. Our ancestors lived in small, tightly knit groups where cooperation and social bonds were crucial for survival. This led to the evolution of emotions like empathy and altruism. Today, these emotions continue to shape our social interactions, even in our largely anonymous urban landscapes. Our ancient fear responses, too, manifest in the modern world, often in maladaptive ways. The fight-or-flight response, which was crucial for our ancestors' survival in the face of predators, now gets triggered in response to stressors like public speaking or traffic jams, leading to chronic stress and anxiety. However, it's essential to remember that evolutionary psychology doesn't imply determinism. Just because we've inherited certain tendencies, 
doesn't mean we're bound by them. We have the capacity for change, for learning, and for creating environments that better suit our evolved dispositions. Moreover, understanding the evolutionary roots of our behaviors can empower us. It can help us make sense of why we do what we do, and can guide us in making healthier choices for ourselves and for our societies. In sum, evolutionary psychology offers a fascinating lens to view our modern world through. It reveals how our ancient adaptations continue to shape our behaviors, often in unexpected ways. Our modern behaviors, thus, are a window into our ancient evolutionary past. Evolutionary psychology offers a profound understanding of human behavior. As we've journeyed through Evolutionary Psychology by David Buss, we've delved into the foundational principles of this fascinating field. It has led us to appreciate the subtle ways in which evolution has shaped our behaviors, preferences, and social interactions. From the intriguing insights into human mating strategies and the role of sexual selection to the exploration of parental investment theory and reproductive challenges, BUS offers a comprehensive look into the human mind's evolution, the dynamics of conflict and cooperation, as well as adaptations in everyday life, further exemplify how our ancient ancestors' survival strategies continue to influence our modern world. Through BUS's examination of evolutionary psychology in the context of today's world, we see how these ancient adaptations manifest in contemporary behaviors. This perspective offers a unique lens through which we can understand and navigate our multifaceted human experience. Through the lens of evolutionary psychology, we begin to understand the intricate ways in which evolution has shaped the human mind. We hope this exploration of evolutionary psychology has piqued your curiosity. As we journeyed through the evolution of the human mind, it's clear how much our primal past influences our present actions and decisions. But this is just the beginning. The field of evolutionary psychology is vast and ever-expanding, with countless other books, research papers, and resources waiting to be explored. If you're interested in delving deeper into this fascinating subject, we recommend The Moral Animal by Robert Wright and The Evolution of Desire by David Buss himself. Each offers unique insights into the evolutionary forces that shape our behaviors and decisions. And of course, we'd love to hear your thoughts on evolutionary psychology. What are some ways you've seen evolution at play in your own life? What other aspects of this field pique your interest? Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey. Don't forget to subscribe for more thought-provoking content.